Okay, so Kinema. Throw a ball up in the air. Uh, this program tests your fundamental knowledge of kinematics. It presents a simple problem. The ball is thrown straight up in the air at some random velocity. You then must answer three questions about the flight of the ball. How high will it go? Uh oh, there's like a physics problem. How high will it go? How long until it returns to Earth? And what will be its velocity after a random number of seconds? The computer evaluates your performance within 15% of the correct answers considered close enough. Oh, that's a decent margin there. Not bad. After each run, the computer gives you another problem until you interrupt the program. Kinema was shortened from the original Huntington Computer Project program, Kinerve, by Richard F. Pav, Patchog High School, Patchog, New York. So let's just look at the sample run here. Yeah, so this is definitely... Uh, Either we have to reverse engineer the, uh, we're basically given how the velocity at how far it's thrown up. So like it's thrown upwards at 15 meters per second, how high will it go? So absent the actual formula involved here, um, we may need to just do a number of runs to determine, to reverse engineer what the, uh, the distance and the time will be. This is like mass acceleration sort of thing. Yeah, it's definitely a math problem. It's been so long since I've physics, though, <laughs> and dealing with uh, gravity and so forth. Yeah, it's uh, it's force equals mass times acceleration. I can't I remember here. Yeah, so we may just have to feel our way through this game. If worse comes to worse, we ask somebody for <laughs> for the relevant uh, formula, perhaps that we'll need. Kinematic for kinematics. All right, a ball is thrown upward at nine meters per second. How high will it go? So actually, let's take a look at the sample run. Uh, this is nine meters per second. So that's a lower speed. So it's probably not going to go up so high. So I'm inclined to say something like. Now let's try four meters, maybe? Close enough. Yeah, correct answer is 4.05. Wow. All right, so that was just a total guess, but that worked. Nice. Should we, we may need to take a log. Um, if this first one doesn't work out, we need to take a log, because even though I got the distance right, we still need to get the time now right. How long it, until it returns in seconds? Um, so it... Uh, at 11 meters, it was about 3 seconds looking at the sample run. We have a 15% buffer. It was 4 after 22. So this is going to be much smaller. So let's just say, I don't know, 1 second maybe? Not even close. The correct answer was 1.8. Damn. What will its velocity be after 2.1 seconds? So this is definitely a formula with like V and T for time. And then I'm just looking again at these sample runs here. Oh, this is just a random thing. Wait a minute. It, the velocity will be zero because <laughs> the whole th it's returning back to the Earth at 1.8 seconds and you're asking us its velocity after 2.1 seconds, so the velocity will be zero. Negative 12? Oh, come on. It's not going to have negative velocity. That's bullshit. One right out of three. <laughs> that's bullshit. Alright, so that's a death. At least we got one right, though. So I guess, yeah, the win condition here would be get all three answers right. But this is definitely... I'm going to say this is firmly, firmly in the edutainment... <laughs> edutainment genre here. It's falling back down. No, it's or it's already fallen, Sprint. I think it's got negative velocity because it's already fallen down. It's returned in 1.8 seconds, and they're asking what the velocity is after 2.1 seconds. So the ball is already it's at zero. It's already come to a stop. It was thrown up from a point in the air. Are we sure about that? Oh, 
Oh, you're saying so it wasn't thrown from the ground, it was thrown from like a few meters off the ground already. A meter or two. Mm. So does that always have to be expressed then in negative numbers? Let me see the sample run. No, they're not entering it. Doesn't specify there's a floor. I guess. All right, a ball is thrown upward at 35 meters per second, so that's considerably higher. Uh, so maybe something like 38 meters. I don't know. Not even close. Wow, 61. Damn. How long until it returns? I need a formula. I'm, I'm going to need the right formula for this. To do this properly. Otherwise, it's just simple guesswork. How long until it returns? What did we say before? So we said one... It was one... Like, nearly two seconds for nine meters a second. to return to the point that 35 meters per second and then it's going faster on the way down so I'm gonna we'll say five seconds that no, was seven seconds yeah. answer was seven will its velocity be after six seconds so that's when it's falling down pretty steadily uh, 30 meters per second uh, negative 26? Oh, so they're saying it's on the way down, so it should be a negative number. I gotcha. But if we're still on its way up, then it'll be positive. So you're right out of three. Ouch. So you find a formula that specifies gravity is 9.8. Yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. That's the one we want. That's the, uh, for Earth, it's 9.8. <laughs> it's too complicated. For yeah, this, this is the edutainment section clearly. Alright, let's find the formula rather than doing more guesswork. Um, let's just find what the... Yeah, so that's G is 9.8, but what is... So we need something with G and V and T, right? T equals V divided by G. Gravity time equations for falling objects. Probably what we want. Okay, time with respect to velocity, so. Oh, that's for something that's falling, but in this case we're throwing upwards. The general gravity equation for elapsed time with respect to velocity is t equals v. And the initial velocity is something that's falling. So the initial velocity they're providing to us, so we have that figure. And then we just have to solve for whatever it is. G is always going to be 9.8. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, hey, that's a good, good point, Felix. Good point, yep. Here we're actually going to learn something I learned, you know, 15 plus years ago. So I think, I think we can work with this one. Time with respect to velocity. So we have t equals v minus whatever. I'm just going to call that x, and they're going to provide us with x. And then it's going to be times 9.8. And we're going to have to solve for, do they ask us for the time or the velocity first? What did they ask us for? How high will it go? Oh, the distance. Shit. Yeah, shit. That doesn't have distance in there. Uh, we need a formula that has distance in it. Hmm. Let me know. Okay, if anyone finds the right formula that we should be using, let me know. Because this isn't going to ask... We're not going to find distance in this one. Time when velocity equals zero. Yeah, that's the VI, that's the X. Well, that's the initial velocity, which is the ball is thrown upwards at, in this case, 32 meters per second. Hang 
this back up. Time when velocity equals zero is distance when velocity equals zero. Well, that's uh, uh, is, that is zero before it's even thrown. It's at the distance is zero. How high will it go? So we need a distance. So we'll do we need distance, velocity, gravity. That's for falling objects. We don't want free fall though, although free fall will impact velocity from a given height. Okay, this is bringing me up the same sheet I was just looking at, same page. Displacement. Yeah, we want the time when the velocity equals zero. Right, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, Soft, right. So when the velocity is zero is at the moment when it reaches its apex, the, the height at which it'll go, and there's that very instantaneous moment where it goes up as high as it can, and then gravity brings it back down. Oh, fair enough. What are you, what are you cooking there, Soft? Actually, yeah, you know what makes sense? So we might be able to use that formula, it's true. So, okay, we have 32 meters a second. Let's get our calculator out here. Where's our calculator? Should we do, should we do a, a, cal a calculator capture? I think we should, that would be fun. Let's do a calculator capture. Oh, I don't want this one. Hell won't this load? It's really weird that it won't capture. Ah, I'm gonna have to kill this. I think it's broken. Oh, you know what? I see the problem is it's just not capturing at all. So I think it's a problem with the, the window compatibility. No, it's not coming up. Oh well. Sorry, won't capture the calculator. Ah, nice, breakfast. Alright, so let's try to solve this. So we have how will it go? So the time is gonna be zero. Um time is when the velocity equals zero. Right. Yes. Now, well, that'll tell us how much time it will be. 32 meters a second. Let's think about this. When it was 35, it was 61. So this is going to be even higher than 61 meters because it's. Or I'm sorry, lower than 61 meters because it's 32 meters a second. Right. Yeah. So. Man, I didn't know I was going to have to be doing algebra here on the street. <laughs> on the street. Um, so we know it's going to be lower than 61. <laughs> there wasn't a kinema 2. Should we try 50? Let's try 52. Close enough. Okay, wow. So that was pretty close. How long in it returns? So maybe this we could solve for. We need to know the velocity. That's just straight free fall, isn't it? Minus the initial velocity is 30. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's not, that form is not going to help us. Shit. How long until it returns? Seven. There's 
be less than seven, so we'll say six and a half. Close enough, so six and a four, okay. So we have two of the three. Can we get this last one? What will its velocity be after 1.4 seconds? All right, if it took 6.4 seconds to return, the, it'll be a positive velocity because it'll still be moving upward, right? Right. So this time they're asking for the velocity. This one I think we can actually solve for using that formula. As long as it's not negative. So the time we know is 1.4. The velocity is what we're solving for. This is minus 32 times 9.8. So, uh, we do 1.4 divided by 9.8 and add 32. That doesn't make sense. Maybe it does. 32.1? Yeah. Let me just gut check this with the last one. It was negative 26, but that was after it already fallen, right? So that's not an appropriate thing. Let me try 321. Damn it! It was 18. Two right out of three, not bad. Uh, ooh, this is good news. 22. This is part of the sample run, I think. We may have lucked out here. From the manual, how high will it go? 24, 6, 9? Oh, the right answer was 24.2. Are you sure about that? Huh. It differs. How long until it returns? Uh, 4.4 4. 4 seconds? Yep, 4.4. Close enough, the correct answer is 4.4. That's not close enough, that's exactly what it what it is. All right, what will the velocity be? Okay, now is the tricky part. So we got the first two right again. We have to get the popular formula to solve for this. So if it's returning in 2.9... I see, so this is probably when it's on its way down already, I would think. What will its velocity be? So the velocity is starting out at 22 meters a second. So it's probably going to actually be pretty low. Although it's going to be negative. I think it'll be negative. And it'll be following and it'll be increasing actually as time goes on. Let's try negative 5 meters per second. Not even close. Oh, it was negative 7. We were so close. Damn it. All right, eight meters a second now. Ah, uh, dagger. Eight meters a second? I don't know. Ten meters? Not even close, it was three. Wow. All right, there's a way I may be able to maybe solve for this. Hang on. Let me make like a quick Google chart. I think that's probably going to be our best bet. I think that's be our best bet for this. Yeah, Sprint, that, that would be helpful too. As, as of now, I'm just basically um, trying to establish a baseline and then do educated guesses off of that. But I'm clearly just kind of feeling my way through this rather than actually going about this in any sort of... Uh, I mean, you obviously just need the... Uh, the whole point is here, you're testing kinematics. So there actually is a formula you're supposed to be using. Okay, and Sprint Cut has supplied them. Thank you, Sprint. Okay, they used 10 for this version, not 9.8. Interesting. So I'm guessing, do you have S is speed or velocity? And two Gs. All right, let me just skip. Th well, maybe we don't need to. S equals distance. Oh, wow, that's, that's really taking me back. I haven't dealt with this in years. Okay, yeah, T is time, and V is velocity. So the velocity here is 8 meters a second. Or velocity F is velocity final, I'm guessing. 
and the first thing is velocity squared. So let's actually take this example. The velocity squared is 64 divided by 10, so you'd expect 6.4 for the distance, but here they're saying it was 3.2. Is that first thing v times v divided by 2g? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah, we did multiplication first. So I if we took the initial velocity of 10, or I'm sorry, 8. 8 times 8 is 64. And divided by 2 Gs, which is 100, right? Oh, I see, yeah. So we're doing that by 100. So that gives us... No, that doesn't work out. Initial one. Time equals... 2 times 8 velocity, 16 divided by 10, 1.6. Yeah, okay, so the middle one works, the time one definitely works. Oh, it's 2 times g. Oh, why was I doing... Thank you, hey, Rhombus. Hey, how's it going, Rhombus? It's been a while. Uh, that makes total sense. I don't know why I was squaring g's there, and that was silly of me. All right. And then velocity, the final velocity, equals uh, 8 minus the time, which is 2.5. That's 250. Or, excuse me, yeah, 25. So um, 8 minus 25 is negative 13. Not even close, it was negative 17. Hang on. Two point five times ten gives us twenty five. Velocity was eight minus twenty five. Oh god, of course. I can't even do simple arithmetic now. That's terrible. Alright. We should get it on this one. We'll get it on this one. Alright, Paul thrown upwards twenty nine meters a second. How high will it go? So we wanna um, square our velocity. So twenty nine oops. 29 squared, 841, and we're dividing that by 20. So we get 42 meters. Actually, 0.05. Close enough. Why'd they say close enough? That was exactly it. How long until it returns? Okay, so the velocity was 29. That's 58 divided by, that's 5.8 seconds until it returns. Close enough. What will its velocity be after four seconds? So four minus, or excuse me, velocity final. Okay, what was the initial velocity? 29. And then we're subtracting that from four. 40, basically 4 times g, 40. 29 minus 40 gives us negative 11. 3 out of 3, not bad. There we go, we got it. After 21 minutes, that's kinema for you. Yeah, you can't get much, can't get very far without the formulas, that's for damn sure. Although I did get 2 out of 3 right just by feeling my way through. Hey, true neutral. Let's also give a bonus um, to uh, Sprint God for helping us out there. Very helpful. Thank you. All right, so that's three down. That's not really exactly. I would argue that's even less of a game. That I mean, that was pure. Um, that was really, uh, like, that was basically like a pro, uh, like a homework set. There was no gameplay involved there. 